World Denver Talks today with Ambassador Patrick Duddy. Uh, Ambassador Duddy, now retired from the State Department, served as ambassador to Venezuela not once but twice, and we'll hear that story in a moment. And he's also served as Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Western Hemisphere in the State Department. Um, currently, he's a visiting faculty member at Duke University and teaches both in the Business School and the School of Public Policy. Welcome to World Denver Talks. Karen, it's delightful to be here. I wonder if you could give us some insight into President Maduro's uh, leadership style. I first um, worked with or uh, um, had contact with um, uh, then Foreign Minister Maduro uh, beginning uh, in 2007 when I arrived in Caracas and presented credentials. I think that's important um, as, a, as a note. He was even then um, uh, serving as Foreign Minister and had been for two or three years at that point. So he is not inexperienced um, at the senior levels uh, of government. He was uh, uh, foreign minister for more than six years and then served um, in the final few months of uh, President Chavez's uh, tenure. And, uh, and as it happens, his life, he served as um, executive vice president to President Chavez. What I would emphasize is he was always um, a very loyal supporter of President Chavez uh, and um, a, just as um, adamantly uh, anti-American often as uh, President Chavez himself was. Um, Anti-Americanism is a, 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 a central element in, um, uh, in the sort of the Bolivarian uh, uh, ideology, frequently referred to as um, 21st century socialism. Um, uh, he um, was then and is now still um, uh, extremely um, uh, sensitive to perceived um, uh, slights um, and to foreign criticism. And it's important to recognize that um, uh, both during the Chavez regime and uh, later there was a, a strong sense that um, Venezuela needed to um, uh, liberate itself, that the point of the revolution was not only to change um, uh, Venezuelan society but also to free uh, Venezuela from um, what uh, the Bolivarians, which is to say Chavez, Maduro, and others, saw as the dominance of the uh, United States. At the same time, um, uh, it is uh, worth noting that he is, um, uh, he has, in a sense, at various times, expressed um, uh, uh, interest in uh, reconstructing the relationship um, with the United States, and I think this is largely a consequence of the continuing um, economic relationship, which um, joins our two countries. In 2012, there was a $56 billion trade relationship. Mm -hmm. So while um, I, uh, you know, I, I note that anti-Americanism is central, and that, um, that sensitivity to slights um, has uh, uh, characterized both um, uh, his movement and um, uh, President Maduro himself, I also note that, um, and this I think accounts for some of the, the uh, uh, the highs and lows in, of recent months. Um, there's also a, a sense that the relationship with the United States um, uh, uh, ought to be better. Um, and um, certainly both President Bush and President Obama um, uh, long maintained that for all of our differences and for all of the difficulties in the relationship, we were interested in having a more productive relationship, a more functional relationship than we have in recent years been able to have. And has it changed at all? Are we consistent on our side? I think actually the United States, um, interestingly enough, having served in uh, uh, both the Bush administration and in the Obama administration, has been pretty consistent first in um, uh, expressing its interest, uh, the interest of the U.S. government, the, the American people, in having a, f a more functional relationship with uh, Venezuela. Um, both administrations have indicated our, our concern um, our, our interest in renewing uh, counter-narcotics cooperation, um, which um, largely ended in around 2006. Uh, um, uh, we have also uh, regularly expressed our, our concern for um, political developments um, uh, in Venezuela, especially with respect to uh, freedom of the press and freedom of expression. In a general way, I believe that most of the hemisphere would like to see um, the uh, frequently bitter um, uh, re exchanges between the United States and Venezuela recede. That is to say, 
um, um, most of the hemisphere uh, maintains uh, decent relationships, um, a decent relationship with Venezuela. Many of them trade extensively with Venezuela. And of course, we are um, uh, the largest investor, in, for many countries, the largest um, um, market and, and, and simply an overwhelmingly important player throughout the hemisphere. And, and I, I think there are, are many countries in the hemisphere um, which would like to see an end to the period in which they have to, in a sense, negotiate around the continuing tensions between the United States and Venezuela. So let's talk about another player, China. When I went up to uh, Capitol Hill for my confirmation hearing at the Senate, the very first question the senators asked me uh, in the hearing was what I thought of uh, China's uh, changing, evolving, and growing role in the hemisphere. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, um, they are a much more significant uh, presence in the hemisphere uh, than ever before. They are, uh, according to uh, many calculations, now Brazil's largest trading partner, and they are Venezuela's largest creditor. At the same time, um, it's important to understand that, that um, China's interaction with the hemisphere um, has, uh, has had you know, many uh, uh, positive um, outcomes. Uh, many of the, the, the countries of, of um, the Western Hemisphere, of Latin America specifically, emerged from the recent global financial crisis sooner and stronger than had been the case with earlier financial crises. And many of those same countries have, over the last decade, experienced significant um, growth, including success um, and moving the, many of the, you know, the poor, the marginalized, those in the informal sector, into the middle class. A part of that story, beyond good macroeconomic policy, um, has been the, uh, the development of China as a trading partner and specifically as a market for many of um, Latin America's important commodities. So are they a player in the hemisphere? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is, is that, um, uh, should we feel threatened by that? I think largely our China's uh, trade with the hemisphere um, is, um, is a benign phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I've certainly heard concerns about, for instance, um, the, the fact that many of the loans China has extended to Venezuela will ultimately be repaid in oil. Um, this poses a real challenge to um, the Venezuelan government and has excited some concern outside of Venezuela. The challenge has to do with the fact that Venezuelan oil uh, production um, uh, has been mostly stagnant for 10 years. Um, they have uh, been able to, to, to have something of an impact on poverty and, and to do some um, outreach based on you know, historically high oil prices. but. Their actual production has improved only marginally since a strike early in the new, in, in the new millennium. Uh, if, in fact, a part of their production into the future is going to be used to amortize their loans to China, then they're going to have um, sort of less coming in by way of, of export dividends. And oil export dividends constitute more than 95% of all of Venezuela's um, export earnings. And it is estimated that those, um, those export earnings represent or are the source for between 40 and 50% of the government's budget. So Venezuela is going to have to start producing more oil if they're not going to feel a pinch as a consequence of the oil being diverted to repay loans. Um, others, I think, um, uh, who are concerned simply because oil is going to China rather than the United States um, uh, should relax a little bit. The U.S. is producing a lot more oil sure. and, um, than we did formally. We're buying a lot more from uh, 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 Canada. Um, we continue to buy a, a significant amount of oil from Mexico as well as Saudi Arabia and elsewhere. And so while Venezuela continues to be an important source of oil for the United States, we are not as important, uh, or rather Venezuela is not as important as it once was to the United States, but oil and oil revenue is of central importance to Venezuela.